We keep using the word uh, turbulent. Let's, uh, let's use it again. Turbulent economic times uh, have sent the private jet industry into uncharted territory. A CNBC exclusive now with the CEO of the nation's largest private jet company. I dare say almost legendary. We, Richard Santulli is the founder and CEO of NetJets, a Berkshire Hathaway company. Uh, it often been mentioned, Richard's name has, as a possible successor to Warren Buffett. We're great, so glad to have you on. We hope that it's been a, we've been trying for a while to get you on. We hope you'll come on again after this. We'll make this as, as pleasant as we can. Well, Welcome. I'm glad to be here, Jeff. Good time to talk about the industry itself to start with. And, and I see that you say that, that your business, private jets, are more correlated with the stock market, while commercial aviation more correlated with corporate profits? No, no, sales. No, no, corporate business jet sales are directly related to corporate profits. Okay, my, oh, but but the yes. actual using of the of the corporate jet with, with the stock market. Well, my business and basically the private jet business. If you, we're really a microcosm okay, of the it. whole industry. We operate, you know, over 870 jets, you know, worldwide. So we indeed, that's almost five six percent of the total population of jets. Oh. Um, Since September 15th, that, that's, the, that's the date that, that's the that date. we remember so well. That was Lehman Brothers. That was the commercial paper right. freezing. How much is business uh, down? Well, two things. We're down about 26% year-to-date uh, in hours flown. Uh, Industry is off about 30%. You know, but really what happened after September 15th, you know, obviously the stock market got killed, and, and, right. and we correlate directly to the stock market. You know, but then you know, airplane financing became non-existent, and actually has that's extended out through the first quarter of this year. So, typically, there are about 12 percent of the population of jets are available. These are jets I'm talking about in the used market. Uh, in 2007, when the industry was you know hot, there was only 10 percent. Well, from September 15th till now, that that number has grown to almost 3,000 jets available for sale. You know, out of a population of you know roughly 16,000. So you're talking almost 17 percent of the whole population is available for sale. You can't finance, you know, so you have more supply, less demand. You know, airplane values are down, you know, on average, you know, 30, 35 percent. And, you know, Fred is Ritz Carlton, so you had to deal with it, yeah. th not just the, the, the economy and the stock market stuff, you had the AIG effect at, at Monarch Bay at, at Ritz Carlton. You had the auto executives headed to, to, to D.C., but that, that yeah. didn't help, right? Well, I mean, not, not only did it not help, I mean, you take the, the, the bad economy, you take obviously asset values and no financing and then really anybody look Washington really demonized anybody that was flying on a private jet you know and then the press really TMZ uh, is, is there are these you know these uh, they're like the guy from Chinatown these, these gum shoes are out there writing down tail numbers at private airports around to try to correlate it with a CEO that's correct of, of a company the good news I mean that's yeah. exactly that's the bad news for most people the good news for net jets anyway is that our owners fly it's a completely anonymous there's there's you know no one no, you can hit a tail number. you can hit a tail number and we have you know the chances that one of the cool. person that's flying on it is on that airplane is about zero this how much of the the corporate uh, usage is, is the CEO anyway well you see here's the big misconception and this is maybe with Washington and Congress and actually the, you know the whole population should realize if you look at business travel by jet by private jet over 75 percent of all those trips there's not a CEO or a senior executive on. No so, senior, not even a senior executive, nope. much less a CEO. I mean, you're looking, those, those trips are comprised of, you know, primarily middle and upper level managers, you know, who are going, and we, again, we, we, we see, you know, we do hundreds of thousands of trips a year. And, we, and, you know, we look at those trips very carefully. And they're going to two or three cities a day. They're not going to Vail. No, they're not going to Vail. And here's the key. I mean, I, I think that most people, and Fred would know this, obviously, is that, you know, over 90% of all emplanements, that's people getting on or off airplanes, you know, occur at 70 airplanes in the United States. 70. You know, last year, NetJets alone, we flew to 2,600 different airplanes, different airports, excuse me. <coughs> and even a, you know, more amazing statistic is that last year we flew and we basically serviced over 60,000 distinct city ports. Now, these are, these are people not going to Aspen. These are cities that people, you know, can't get to commercially or if they did have two or three stops you know, have to go somewhere and drive six hours. So, you know, it's, it's really, a, I mean, the, the misconception is, is all wrong. The, the, these airplanes are very, very effective business tools. When, when times get tough in, in, for a major airline, uh, they'll cut routes, right? Utilization comes down. They might put some in, in the desert. Have you had to do that? No. I mean, we're, we're doing what we can. We have some airplanes for sale. I mean, our business is down. Um, 
And we'll, we'll sell our way out of it, is really. The, the fact that we're part of Ber Berkshire Hathaway obviously gives us some tremendous financial stability. And more importantly, you know, smart people realize that flying on private jets is not a commodity business. It's not like home heating oil. Right. I mean, and so the fact that we're not going to spend less money on safety or training, you know. We, we open the journal every day. We see ads. You know, here's one for Hawker, right? I mean, tr and they almost sound defensive. Right. Like you don't need to be ashamed to fly these jets. Do these work, these ads? Well, I mean, I, I think education. I think more, more, as I said, the misconception that people, you know, get on an airplane and they have three glasses of champagne and, and you know, and these, most people, you know, again, as I said, over 80% of the people that use airplanes for business jets, you know, business, you know, are in a six or seven passenger airplane, they're having a box lunch, and they're going to two or three cities a day. Uh, you know, it's just, and again, the press doesn't help. Rich, let me ask you this. You talk about how hours flown are down 26% versus the industry standard down about 30%, but wh where does that leave you just in terms of uh, employment? Uh, do you have to cut back on the number of pilots you employ, the number of... Uh... We, we, I think we're the only company so far in the industry that hasn't had, you know, furloughs. We are right now, however, we are long people, and what we are trying to accomplish, and actually hopefully we'll do by July, are voluntary measures to reduce the number of pilot days. We call them pilot days and people days. And hopefully that'll work. I mean, we have some very attractive uh, programs we've started to hopefully make them voluntary rather than mandatory. Mm. You, you know, you said that 17 percent of the uh, corporate corporate aircraft, of private jets, are in the market. That's because corporations are dumping them. I mean, yeah. they, they, you know, right. they're afraid they're afraid to have them. That should be good for your business. Well, we think so. But the problem is, and, and I talk to you know a lot of CEOs, yeah. and and the real problem. Fred, is that the airplanes can't be sold. I mean, there's no right now. Well, right. The market actually has started. You know, the, the market has started to, you know, the airplane sales have started about in the last two months. But, you know, the, the CEOs I speak to realize that not only can we save them, you know, a significant amount of money and be more efficient, mm -hmm. it's the whole, you know, it's, it's, it's the anonymity of flying on our airplane. But unless they can sell those airplanes, they certainly are not going to go to the board and buy shares with us. How, much, how much pain is Gulfstream? Excuse me? How much pain is Gulfstream? The manufacturer. Yeah. I mean, we have manuf that's a nice yeah. manufacturing business we have in this country that, that probably we're not helping much well, right now. Yeah, well, Joe, we have, I mean, our industry, the private jet industry, employs, you know, 1.2 you know, million people. It's a huge industry, yeah. and it's over, you know, $150 billion. And, and so, I mean, more airplanes are exported also. I mean, about 50% of all the airplanes built are exported, and so that's great for our balance. I think you know, balance the president took a G5. To Manhattan for the for the Broadway. Right. Day. It was an Air Force One at least, but well, that was that was a Gulf Stream, right? G5. Yeah, he took I, the Air Force One over to they, Saudi they Arabia. They flew Air Force One around the Statue. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. But I, I tell you, I mean, you have to commend them for that because right. it's, it's kind of like NetJets. I mean, the nice thing about NetJets, I'm going to put put a plug in here, uh, is that if you buy a share in any of our 15 airplane types, you can interchange to the appropriate airplane. So if you're a Gulf Stream owner and you're flying from here to Columbus, you can fly an Excel. And, you know, what the president did, I commend them for it. You know, it's a lot less expensive to fly a Gulfstream than it is Air Force One. That, 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 really, uh, that relates to another point. About 30% of your trips are personal as opposed to business, right? People well, no, use them for we have their own personal 30%, use? 30% of our owners only use it for personal use. Uh -huh. it's, uh -huh. that's, I mean, so we have obviously some wealthy people, and God yeah. bless them. And what's happening to that vis-a-vis -vis the business use? That's not, I mean, I, I was completely wrong. I assumed that that would be down much more than yeah. business, and it's not. That, that personal use is that, you know, down about 8%. Huh. Business use is about 30%. How, and is there a way to measure how much is down because of economic reasons and how much is down because of just a, the embarrassment factor? No. I mean, yeah. it's really it's difficult. I mean, how, how much has Marquee helped you to be able to have a card instead of an actual oh, huge. I mean, Mark, Marquee really was a you know, great company. It's, uh, it's been the entry level you know, jet for us, kind of. It's a prepaid telephone card. Except so you that's get, huge. That's it warm, huge. But, yeah. Yeah, it's 25. Basically, you get 25 hours guaranteed. I mean, the, what we sell is guaranteed service. I mean, today, if you wanted to go anywhere in the United States, I mean, if you have an eighth of a, or a Milwaukee card, it's a, you know effectively having an airplane at every airport in the United States, actually in the world. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. How's that CEO? What's his name? <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> Kenny D. Yeah. Kenny D. Uh -huh. All right, Rich, we want to thank you very much for coming in and joining us today. It's been great having you here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Hope to see thank you again you, soon. We'll again, see you Ri soon. Richard Santulli. Thank you.